Hello everyone. I, Beeta Gupta, student of fourth year, Department of Civil Engineering, Faculty of Engineering and Technology, University of Lucknow. Today, I am going to present a seminar on the topic Digit Structural System. This seminar is prepared under the guidance of Engineer Jitain Pratap Singh. Let's see the table of content. The table of content includes following topics introduction, history, digit components, triangular digit module, structural action of digit module, design of digit nodes, types of digit structures, merits and demerits of digit system, case study, conclusion and references. First question arises that what is digit structural system? The digit structural system is defined as a diagonal member formed as a framework made by the intersection of different materials like metals, concrete or wooden beams which is used in the construction of buildings and ropes. Recent trend shows that the diagonal structural system is becoming popular in design of tall buildings due to its inherent structural and architectural advantage. Diagonal is an exterior structural system in which all parameters Vertical columns are eliminated and consist of only inclined columns on the face of building. Diagonal member in diagonal structure system can carry gravity load as well as lateral load. The diagonal system are the evolution of braced tube structure. Here in this slide, we see two figures. Figure 1, braced tube structure. It is a building, John Hancock Center, located in Chicago. While the second figure is of digit structure known as IBM building located in Pennsylvania. The major difference which we see in both the buildings is that in brace tube building, vertical columns present in the perimeter of digit building, while in digit building, there is no vertical column present in the perimeter of the building. The diagonal member in digit structure act both as an inclined columns and as a bracing element. The world's first digrid hyperboloid structure was designed in 1896 by a Russian engineer and architecture, Voldemir Suvok. Voldemir Suvok designed a Suvok tower in Polivino, Russia. It is a 37 meter long steel digrid tower which became the first hyperboloid structure in the world. Its steel cell help experiences minimum wind load. Similar hyperboloid appeared abroad only after 10 years Suvok invention. Let's see the digrid components. Following are the digrid components. Nodes, diagonal member, ring beams, tie beams, core, and floor slab. First, nodes. Nodes are the joint that connects all the members. These are typically formed by bolting or welding the ends of member to a gusset plate. Diagonal members. Diagonal members are the members that transfer both lateral and gravity load through axial action. It can be made up of steel, concrete, timber, and composite materials. Ring beams. Ring beams comprises of a ring structure at the periphery of the building, connected at the nodes, which are further connected to the digrid columns. These are extremely important in maintaining the stability of the system. Tie beam. Tie beams are used to transfer load from RC core to digit structure. Core. Cores are used to carry gravity load. And floor slab. Floor slabs are used to connect diagonal to reach a stability. Triangular digrid module. Digrid structure is modeled as a beam and subdivided longitudinally into modules according to this repetitive diagonal pattern. E 
Each digrade module is defined by a single level of digraids that extend over n stories. Here, in the figure, a di triangular digrade module is shown. Now, let's see the dimensions of module. Height of module depends upon the number of stories stacked per module. Usually, two to six stories are stacked per digrade with average floor height varying from 3.5 to 4.15 meter on an average. The base of the module. It depends on the height and optimal angle that is apex angle of the digrade. Here, the figure represents a triangular element of three-story module, which includes diagonals, two floor waves, and a ring beam. Digrid optimal angle. Optimal angle for a maximum bending rigidity of column is 90 degree, and for a maximum shear rigidity of diagonal of braces is 35 degree. However, Diagonal member in a digrade carries both shear and moment. Hence, assume that optimal angle of digrade falls between 35 and 90 degree. Usually, 60 to 70 degree is adopted. The following major loads which act on the building are vertical load, lateral load, and shear load. So, in this slide, we will learn how this loads affects the building. Structural action of digrade module. Effect of vertical loading. Vertical load from apex will distribute to diagonal members as axial force. Effect of lateral load. Lateral load will cause forces in opposite direction on windward and leeward side. Again, this load is transferred as axial load. Effect of shear load. Shear load acting on apex causes one member to win compression and the other to win tension. Node design. Node. Node is an important component of diagonal system. All the diagonal sections are connected to each other by the help of node. And these nodes are joined to other section by welding or bolting. These nodes are designed for two types of load, load and the vertical load is transferred in the form of axial loads from the digrid member that are placed above the nodes to the gusset plane and stiffener, then to the digrid member below the nodes. The horizontal shear is also in the form of axial load in the digrid above the nodes, but here one is in compression and other is in tension. The transfer of load is from above the node member to the gusset plate and stiffener, and then from gusset plate and stiffener to the member below the node in pair of compression and tension. Now, Let's learn about different types of digrade structure. Classification of digrade structure based on the material used. First, steel digrade structure system. Second, concrete digrade structure system. Third, timber digrade structure system. Steel digrade structure system. The most commonly and popularly used material in the construction of digrade is steel. They can be quickly erected and cost of labor for installation is low. Concrete digrade structure system. The most commonly used digrade material is concrete. The concrete digrades are used in both types, precast and cast in situ. Timber digrade structure system. The least used material in the construction of digrades is timber. This material has more disadvantage. The only advantage of this material is that the section of timber are easily available in any shape and size. Here are the different digrade structure. Figure 11, steel digrade. Figure 12, concrete digrade. Figure 13, timber digrade. Merits of digrade. These are as follows. It improves aesthetic view. It reduces uses of steel. 
thus helps in sustainable development. The digest makes maximum exploitation of a structural material, allows generous amount of light. Unique designs and floor plans can be implemented. Better ability to redistribute load than movement frame. Redundancy helps transfer load from failed portion to other structure element. The merits of digrids are as follows. The digrid construction techniques are not thoroughly explored. People are still working and learning about it. It requires skill and experience level. If designed not properly, affect the economy and safety of structure. It is hard to design windows that create a regular language from floor to floor. The number of stories directly depend upon the primary module height. However, erection of nodes is also a difficult process. Now, let's see the case study on the digrid structure system. The first digrid structure system in India is ILA building in Hyderabad. This structure was built in year 2008. The name of the building is ILAB Center Oval Building as it is in the shape of oval. This structure is located in high tech city rule Hyderabad. It is a five story building. Its total area is 50 square feet. Typical floor area is 10 square feet. The architect who designed this structure is Uday Josi from Mumbai. Project management consultant involved in this project is Construction Catalyst Private Limited. Software used are CAD 3D Max Structure Software. Steel Producer for Tata Structure. Second case studies of Swiss Ray Building located in London. Structure was built in year 2003 and located on the street of 30 St. Mary X, London. The architect who designed this structure is Norman Foster Kane Settleworth. The architect firm is Foster and Partners. The owner of this structure is Safra Group. The height of the building is 180 meter and it is a 41 story building. The plan of the structure is circular with changing diameter along the elevation. The diameter of the structure get changes as along the elevation. The third one is Hertz Tower located in New York. This structure was built in year 2006. It is located in New York City. The architect who designed this structure is Norman Foster, Joseph Irwin, George B. Post. The developer are this man Spear. The height of the building is 183 meter and it is a 46 story building. The structure is prismatic form and of rectangular floor plan. The floor area of the structure is 8,56,000 square feet. Now, let's come to the conclusion. Diagonal structure system is a best structure system for high-rise building, especially irregular sea. Using diagonals, we can build skyscrapers even without inner core providing vast floor area. Digrids help in sustainable development as amount of construction material required is less and energy is safe due to less obstruction to incoming light as the periphery of the building. Digrid structures are aesthetically dominant. Here are the some references which are used to prepare this seminar. Thank you. Thank you for your interest and patience.